Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. Today we're building a really cool sonar-based theremin-style MIDI controller, the Altura Mark II by Zeppelin Design Labs. It's a very cool and well-designed device with various modes, scale choices, preset saving and controls for a variety of musical uses. I actually had the pleasure of meeting Glenn and crew at Knobcon last year and they agreed to send me a kit to build. In the box for the full kit, you get a tidy plastic bag with the signed information brochure, a guide sheet for building the case, stickers for the case, the PCB, two baggies with all of the components, including the sensors and the display, a battery holder, and another baggie with the pre-cut black acrylic parts to build the case. I started with the electronics. The PCB is very nice quality and DIY friendly, with only through hole parts. Once I arranged everything on my work area, I started placing and soldering all of the resistors and ceramic bypass capacitors. It was very easy to use Ray Wilson's top soldering technique on this board. I then placed the sticker with my serial number on the board and proceeded to trim the leads and touch up my soldering from behind. Next I installed the ICs and made a fatal mistake. Two of the ICs have very similar codes, the CD4050 and the CD4051. I failed to notice that and ended up soldering them swapped. Of course this build never worked and by the time I realized my mistake it was impossible to remove and swap the chips without damaging them and the board because I didn't use sockets. I have since suggested to Zeppelin that they include sockets for all of the chips but even if they don't I definitely recommend you use some of your own just in case. Zeppelin labs are not responsible for user error. I actually had to get a new factory built unit to shoot the demo video. Anyways blissfully unaware of my fatal mistake I soldiered on, following the ICs with the socket for the microcontroller, which did come included in the kit. I then carefully bent the legs against my work surface and snapped the big chip onto its socket. Next I screwed on the nylon standoffs and proceeded to install the regulator and transistors, mindful of their correct orientation. I then clipped their leads and started cutting the male headers to size, two with four pins and two with three pins. I used the base of the acrylic case to hold the headers in place as I turned the board around to solder. I then soldered on the electrolytic capacitor, clipped its leads, and started assembling the push buttons. I used a dab of crazy glue to secure the button caps, then used my pliers to straighten the legs before pushing them through the PCB. I then used the acrylic case cover to align the buttons to their hose and proceeded to solder them on. Next came the display. After bending the display terminal slightly to increase friction, I snapped them onto their header and using the acrylic cover once again to align it, I proceeded to solder it in place. Check the manual for more detailed information on how to install the display. Next came the MIDI connector, the power button and the power input jack. The MIDI connector and power button just snap right on and stay fairly snug while you solder them in place. For the power connector, I had to hold it with my finger and use the snake charmer technique to solder. Now on to the tall trimmers. It helped to straighten the mounting lugs with pliers before snapping them on. I then soldered a single lug on each pot and placed the lid on to make sure they were perfectly aligned before finishing the soldering job. Almost done with the board, time to install the battery holder. Just run the wires through their hole, then screw on the holder itself with the included screws. Finally clip the wires to size 
strip them and solder them on. The finishing touches are the power button cap, which just snaps right on, and the LED, minding its polarity, and the distance from the board so that it goes through the hole on the lid. You can now connect the sensors to test. You have to bend the headers on the sensor slightly. Check the manual for how to do that. Now with the sensor headers on the bottom, each sensor facing outward, connect them to the board with included ribbon cables so that they don't twist. Now plug it in and turn it on. Mine of course did not work, we already know why. I was perplexed but decided to troubleshoot later and go ahead with building the case. First I removed the protective paper from the sensor mounts and snapped on the sensors. Then I removed the inside protection from the bottom and the sides and proceeded to carefully glue them on. Leave the outside protection on as super glue can leave an ugly white residue. I used Q-tips to clean off excess glue when needed. Installing the magnets that keep the lid closed is fairly tricky. Make sure you use a very small amount of glue and mind the magnet polarity so the box top attracts the lid rather than repel it. For me, using tweezers to place the magnets and a small allen key to keep pressure on them as the glue dried was helpful. Now you can start removing the outer protective coating. And on to placing the stickers. Follow the procedure on the manual for this, it's fairly critical since there are so many components that have to stick through the holes on the lid. Once you've removed all of the protective paper, it's time to slip in the circuit. Tighten the mounting screws. And finish decorating the box with stickers. That's it for this video, I hope you liked it. If so, as usual, I ask that you hit like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon. And go check out the demo video, where I take the brand new Altura that Zeppelin Lab sent me for a spin with some cool ideas for using it in a modular setting. See you soon and stay noisy.